latest offering from Four Chords and the Truth. That's Bonnie Susie Cleland, The Wedding Reel, Hannah's Reel and MacArthur's Road. You're listening to The Garden Sessions. It's episode 23. What a show we have coming up for you this week. Celtic Connections was the big thing that's been happening this last couple of weeks and Tom and Angles have been over there and they join me now. The salt and sauce in a sea of salt and vinegar. <laughs> Tom Harland and Dave the Angles Gimble. How's it going, Jack? I'm very well. How has it been this last couple of weeks? It's been absolutely amazing. I've been blown away by the Celtic Connections Festival. Um, and we've got various reports from the Festival Club um, that uh, Angles and I went along to. Uh, amazing event, really. Yeah. Um, Angles, what's on the show then this week? What can we expect? Well, apart from all the Celtic Connections stuff, we've got the usual things. We've got the Folky News, a bumper edition, I hear, this week. Uh, we've got Dave's Angle. And I'm prepared mm. to give you a wee hint on the angle, yeah. well, Ooh, which you don't normally get. But uh, but um, I, I will say that uh, we'll have heard this song before. Oh. When? I'm not telling you that. It's not much of a hint. On the garden be. sessions or we've just in it, general? We've heard it before on the garden sessions. It could okay. be any song, Angus. Yeah, there's so many to choose from. <laughs> Anyway, it's gardensessions.co.uk, podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. And guess what? New website. Oh, it's nice. up and running. And uh, it looks rather good. Pretty Swiss, Jack. I might I just say before we continue, uh, I think we should give a wee shout out to uh, the Four Chords and the Truth uh, section there because they've been joined by somebody else. Uh, Indeed, Alistair Slesser on the Bazooki. Mm. A nice addition. So Four Chords, the Truth and Slesser. And you can download them um, by going to gardensessions.co.uk um, for free, I believe. And you can download that song for free. Recorded live in the Bothy just the other night. Indeed. Tom, what have you got there? I think coming up next is uh, going to be um, one of my little adventures in the festival club um, through uh, Celtic Connections. Um, I believe that, uh, that we're going to hear a wee interview I managed to get with Kate Rusby, which I'm very excited Kate about. Kate Rusby. Yeah, one of my all-time what folk a heroes. Wow. So I'm at the Festival Club and I'm joined uh, by Kate Rusby. Kate, how are you enjoying the festival so far? I'm loving it. I've been here for about three days now and having such a fantastic time. It's and brilliant. What are you most looking forward to seeing out of all the different acts? Well, the main gig that I wanted to see and I've been waiting to find out what day it was on was Dick Gockin's gig all right. doing um, Handful of Earth. And I was gutted to find out it was the same day that I'm playing... And I'm doing a thing um, called the Radio Ballads. Mm-hmm. Uh, my gig isn't till Wednesday, but this is another thing I'm doing on Monday. <laughs> yeah, but that was the main thing I really wanted, wanted to see. So, but I'm not going to get a chance to see him. But I'll probably be able to see him later and buy him a pint. Oh, tonight. So that'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be coming to your gig on Wednesday night. Oh, all right, very good. <laughs> we're all a big fan at the show. Oh, thank you. Hope you're going to be you. playing your song Cobbler's Daughter, which is one of our favourites. I favorites. think we most probably will. <laughs> yes. So what, could you just tell us briefly what the story is behind that song, Cobbler's Daughter, how it came about? I, I, have, a, I have a great load of um, old ballad books that I've kind of found over the years from various towns in, in second-hand bookshops in the dusty corners. And, um, and I just found, found, the, song, or found the, so, the story of the song in one of these ballad books and then created a song around it, really. And because I just loved the story, I thought it was quite funny. So I thought, I need to do something with that. And it didn't have a tune and it wasn't quite finished the song. So I thought, I'll expand on it and create a whole new song from it. So That's a yeah, lovely song. I think it's quite good. I think it's quite funny. Is that, that's what I think. Really. Funny, yeah. But you're very kind to say so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Kate Rusby. Thank you very much. Oh, what a treat that was. Joking. Yeah, what a score. Speaking to She Russell. sounds lovely as well. She oh, does, she sounds so jolly. She's such a lovely lass. It was, it was an absolute pleasure to be able to speak with her for a wee bit. Yeah. I wish I'd gotten over for more of this Celtic Connection stuff. But there's more interviews coming up, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there's one or two in the bag, I think, yeah. And also, um, the one thing which I did manage to get over to see was the launch of the complete Robert Tannehill CD um, oh, from Regional Records. Night, eh? Fantastic night, and we've got a little uh, report on that coming up later as well. Um, but... If I may be so bold as to introduce the next tune, this is um, Kate Bramley um, from her album Little Canaan, I believe that's how it's pronounced. She played at the Paddy Bortsby Folk Club at the Royal Oak um, two weeks ago, and she's also involved in Radio Britfolk.co.uk, which is like um, some of her contemporaries in, in the old uh, internet 
folk radio oh, world. This is Kate Bramley. It's called Hard Times All Around the World. <laughs> About the poor people, how they're getting along Start up in the spring, finish up in the fall And when it's all over, they've nothing at all And it's hard, hard times For fishermen now, it's a life on the land The miners can never get dirt on their hands We worked on the railroads, laying down the track now they're ripping them out and there's no going back And it's hard, hard times The silos stand empty and follow the land And all of the workers they can't understand No apples or beets to be raised anymore When it's cheaper to fly them from some distant shore And it's hard, hard times Feel. To be right out of luck, to be trod down at heel Forget standing together, he says union's a mistake When you make your first million, he'll give you a break And it's hard, hard times But the worst is the salesman, he's everything you need From collapsible cars to inflating TVs Little red buttons that can kill everyone And when he holds out his hand and it's hard, hard times So come all gather round me and listen to my song About the poor people, how they're getting along Start up in the spring, finish up in the fall And when it's all over, they've nothing at all And it's hard Little Canaan, that's Kate Bramley, um, who obviously used to sing with Jez Lowe and the Bad Pennies and so on and so forth. That song's called Hard Times All Around the World. And if you want to hear more from Kate Bramley or find out about buying her albums or where she might be performing, katebramley.com is the address to go to. But I think um, we're all agreed here. Quite pounding stuff. Mm, really lovely. good stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tom, I think it's time to go over to you. It's news! It's folk! What is it, Tom? It's the folk in you! Mm-hmm. And the folk in you is brought to you this week, as ever, in association with Paddy Bart's Wee Folk Club. Well, every Sunday night at the Oak, we've got the Wee Folk Club at 8.30, an intimate venue, 30 seats, acoustic. It's a great night out. We've got some fantastic musicians and uh, singers. Every Sunday night, do come along. Sunday the 4th of February, it's Tim O'Leary and Cammy Robson, excellent Irish singer, songwriter Tim O'Leary, fiddler and bazooki player in the esteemed company of guitarist Cammy Robson. Um, and we open the Folky News this week with a very sad tribute uh, to former member of Scottish folk band North Sea Gas, Cameron Cammy Gaskell, who passed away after a brief illness on the morning of January the 25th. 
Cameron taught in ALP in the Scots Music Group from 1992 to 2004 and was a great influence to hundreds of aspiring fiddle players in that time. Mm. He taught beginners mainly and was well known for leading sessions in the Antiquary in Stockbridge and the Fiddle Festival. He was a real fixture of the Edinburgh music scene and was always encouraging people in sessions and making sure everyone got involved. He had a wicked sense of humour and will be missed. Another piece of folk news from the Edinburgh folk scene that uh, might shock some uh, some regulars of the Edinburgh folk scene is that Andy Chung um, has cancelled his regular gigs. No! Um, (laughs) Familiar name around Fife and Edinburgh, Andy Chung. He's taking some time out to concentrate on writing and recording his new album. Chung hasn't stopped performing completely, though. Ah, Thank goodness. He's been performing a few smaller gigs around the Scottish Highlands, and Andy told the Garden Sessions, it's a completely different pace up there. (laughs) (laughs) It certainly is, Andy. I know that well. I love the Highlands. But the murmurs in the folk scene, lest you get too depressed, Angles, um, are that it won't be long before Andy's gigging around Fife and Edinburgh again. So stepping away from uh, Edinburgh and moving across to across to Glasgow, across to the west, Ooh. it's been the Celtic Connections Festival, as you may have guessed already from our re-interviews there. This year's festival was launched on the Wednesday the 17th of January in spectacular style as Glasgow City Centre witnessed over 100 torchbearers parade from George Square to the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall in the opening torch-lit procession. Um, Celtic Connections opening concert, Hands Across the Water, launched a busy first week for the festival and for the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, which has already had full houses for both Clanad and Mary Shapin Carpenter. And in that first week, me and Angles took on Richie Havens, which was an amazing concert. Fantastic. Richie Havens, supported by David Ferrard. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. And uh, how did you enjoy that, Angles? Yeah, well, it was a great concert. Um, unfortunately, we missed uh, the first part of, of, of David Ferrard's mm. set. Uh, we had a few travel problems, but uh, mm. but we caught a few of his tunes and very very good as always. And then Richie Havens came out and did a fantastic uh, performance. With the oh, the amazing. highlight of the evening was him launching himself four feet off the ground to do a scissor kick at the age of what must be something <laughs> like you know this septuagenarian with a huge beard doing scissor kicks. It was really quite impressive. It he lulled us into a false sense of security. We were just hunched over the guitar at the beginning, and then he just. Uh, Hammered it out at the end in proper rock and roll style. Eh? But there's uh, there's reviews of that as well as Kareem Power and mm, uh, the launch of the Tannehill so. CD up on the website. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you can read them. How do you get how do you get them, Jet? Um, just go onto the website and um, click on reviews. The new website is that the new website, yes. the all new Garden Sessions launched website today. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, moving on with some stuff from Celtic Connections. I'm just going forward towards today's date. Um, on the 21st of January, um, I went across to Glasgow and caught up with uh, banjo ace Eamon Coyne and Arcadian multi-instrumentalist singer and songwriter Chris Drever. They've just launched their um, album Honk Toot Sweet, um, and it's out today on Compass Records. It brings together and highlights the duo's interests in the quirky side of the music they play, culminates in some swingy and groove orientated tunes, um, and as well as recording traditional music of various countries, they play some self-penned, some newly written tunes. And there are three songs that you can hear sung by Chris on that CD, which receive a simple and complicated treatment. Um, and on the, cor- on the recording, they're joined by two percussionists, John Joe Kelly um, of Fluke and Michael McGoldrick fame, and on Baran, Eric Lochan from Orkney. Um, and we caught up with Chris Drever in the Festival Club after their gig. Uh, myself and Eamon have played together for a lot of years, so um, a, a good deal of the music was just a collection of things that we've been playing for maybe five five years or so, and uh, it just seemed to be an opportune time to make the recording. We actually recorded most of it, uh, well, I think we probably started nearly two years ago, um, so it's been, it's been, it's been a long time uh, in the making, but just uh, when we could grab a minute free, we were both both have quite a lot of other commitments. So. And are, do you sing on the album or is it all instrumental? No, no, there's two or three songs on the record as well. Really? Banjo music, yeah. Excellent. Um, you're, you're both familiar, I guess, with the Royal Oak in Edinburgh. I was wondering how you thought the Edinburgh folk scene compared with the Glaswegian one. Well, I mean, you would need to live in Glasgow probably to know the folk scene well, but it's great through here. I mean, there's lots of great players and uh, certainly, you know, w- welcoming, friendly people too. Uh, yeah. And if you could, uh, I guess you'll be seeing lots of acts during the festival, but if you could just recommend one act to our listeners, if you could only go to just one act, what would that act be? Uh, uh, the Skull Van Big Band. 
They're a, they're a band from Brittany in northern France. Um, they've made some tremendous records over the years, and they, they rarely play in this country, so I would think that would be a treat. So where, where are they playing about? Uh, they're playing with Shugal Nifty a couple of nights ago, and they have another concert. I can't remember off the top of my head. You need to check the programme. Sorry, Tom. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Chris Driever. No problem at all. Thank you. Lovely guy there, Chris Drever. Um And they were just great together, playing up there on the stage. Amazing talent. Uh, Again, if I could have been there, I would. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, moving on to the 28th of January, somehow I'd somehow f- managed to find myself at the BBC Radio Scotland Young Traditional Music of the Year Awards, um, which was Good won score. by Gaelic singer Catriona Watt. That was held in the city halls there. And Catriona Watt from Lewis, she beat off stiff competition from uh, Darren McLean, Mike Fass, Callum Stewart, Callum McCrimmon, and Martin Hunter to win the prize, which includes an album contract with Foot Stompin' Records. She's mm. currently a student on the traditional music course at the RSAMD, um, and is a great fiddler. There's a lot of folky singer. musicians coming through the RSAMD at the moment. Indeed, yes. Uh, um, anyhow, moving forward, if you happen to be around about Glasgow on Wednesday, you can check out the uh, uh, Celtic Connection School concert, um, which features the Anna Massey Band. That's... Uh, that's in the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, um, and it's free, but ticketed, so you better get there reasonably early. Um, Anna Massey's on from 11.45am to 12.15pm. Um, By all accounts, a fantastic gig. Mm, she's mm. a talented multi-instrumentalist, excels in playing the fiddle, mandolin and tel- tenor banjo, and was voted Radio Scotland Young Traditional Musician of the Year in 2003. And she's been popping up in folk clubs all across the land yep. for a while. So I think that just about wraps up the Folky News. It's a tale of two cities. Anyhow, for all the latest Folky News, you can visit uh, gardensessions.co.uk forward slash news. And that's the Folky News. Mm-hmm. Oh, how we've waited, Angles. You hold the, the keys it's to all the down, secrets. It's written Give us down it. before me. All the secrets. Is it time? It is. The official garden sessions download chart. The official garden sessions download chart. At number 10, it's a non mover for the Laurie Watson 3 with Cape on Tree. At 9, it's down 3 for the Laurie Watson 3 again with When Maggie Gangs Away. At 8, it's down 1 for Rantum Scantum with Hush. At 7, it's a new entry for Jamie Laval and Ashley Broder with The Cuckoo and the Blackbird. At six, it's down two for Andy Chung with the Wee Room. At five, it's a new entry again for Jamie Laval and Ashley Broder with Goodness Piper's gracious. Reveries. Oh, Lord. Indeed. At four, it's up four for Andy Chung with the Penny Fall. Pockets full of jingling change, playing on the Penny Falls. Long summer days to waste a week till my mother calls. At three, it's a re-entry for Lolita Cafe with Running Wild. At two, it's a re-entry again for Frank Burkett with Old Timer. Right, wait a minute. Have we heard anything from Four Cars and the Truth this chat? Nothing. Shocking. So either they're number one, or they're nowhere to be seen. Could this be a first? Well, Jack, I'm here to tell you that the official Garden Sessions number one is a non-mover for Frank Burkett featuring Cassandra Steele with Military Band. Mm -hmm. Back to take your hand on this one. 
warm, familiar land. But for now, I'll play the march in the military band. About you crossing off those days and nights, and with every gunshot and blast, I think will you be flying your flag at half mast? We're dug in. Still playing time. The drum awaits a word from home, and so do I. God bless your right in hand. It's all I can stand. The questions that you ask of the military band. What we thought, smiles of ambition, now tears of war. Poor old Charlie Sands run through by hand. It's one less brave player in the military band. About you crossing off those days and nights, and with every gunshot and blast, I think will you be flying your flag at half It gets dark. Best time for attack, they say. So play the march. But as man after man does the best he can, I'm thinking, what's the point of a military band? Crossing off those days and nights, and with every gunshot and blast, I think will you be flying your flag at half mast? And with every gun. Shot and blast. I think will you be flying your flag at half mast? The official garden sessions oh, number Frank one. The again. Still track. the official garden. How sessions many times one. has he been number one, Angles? Uh, uh, seven. Seven, seven times. times. Six. Six times. Six. I'm not sure. Six or That's seven. That's a lot. <laughs> but he's certainly the longest standing number one at the Garden Sessions. I suspect that that new Four Chords and the Truth song might do well, though. That's a folk epic. I suspect that that new Four Chords and the Truth song might do well, though. That's a folk epic. It is indeed. The Bonnie Susie Cloud one. But then we wouldn't like to be sitting influencing the charts because obviously we wish Frank well. Yep. I think his hand's healing up slowly but surely as well. <laughs> I'm sure I'm 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 sure he'll feel much better now that he knows he's 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 still 
number one. <laughs> You're listening to the Garden Sessions, Garden Sessions at Code UK, podcast at Garden Sessions at Code UK. Coming up, our featured artist. Yep, yeah, in amongst all this Celtic connection stuff, we have a featured artist yes. still to pack in this week, and it's Roscoe Galloway. Um, and, well, you'll hear it later on. Fantastic tunes. and uh, a man that knows, knows a thing or two about a folk odyssey as well. Yeah, he spent some time up in the Western Isles, um, in Iona, I believe. But uh, that's all coming up later, as well as more Celtic Connection stuff. Dave Zangle. Dave, you gave us a clue earlier on that we've heard the song before on the Garden Sessions. Yeah. Can you... No. Give us any another clue? Come on, oh. give us another clue. No, no, no. I, no I, you, I'm regretting giving you that clue. If you perfect. give us one clue, you have to keep giving us more clues. Give no, us I a don't. chance. I don't have to do anything, Jack. <sighs> okay, Angles, what, what's happening there? Well, uh, part of the Celtic Connection thing we've already spoken about was the, the launch of the Complete Works of Robert Tannehill, Volume 1. Which you didn't go to. I didn't to. get to go to. Mm. No, I was sorely disappointed. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately night. I couldn't make it. You guys managed to go along. Yes. And I believe, Tom, you managed to, to get a few interviews and, and uh, got a hold of Emily Smith. You're listening to the Garden Sessions and I'm joined by Emily Smith currently in St Andrews in the Square. We've been listening to the Tanner Hill launch. Thank, welcome. Thank you very Emily. much. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, how have you been enjoying the festival so far? Well, this is my first jaunt up to it tonight, actually. Um, I'm sort of involved in various things this year. And so this is my first gig tonight. It was, it was great, but sadly I have to scoot back home great. again. What, what are you looking forward to seeing most in the festival? Are you going to be seeing any other act? Well, sadly, because I, I'm on a, a tour, um, well, not sadly, I'm looking forward to it, but um, with Burn Song, well, it's a, a tour of eight songwriters, and uh, we're, we start our tour tomorrow night, so we'll be um, gigging every night right up until the 29th of January. So we're coming up on Wednesday night to do a gig at Celtic Connections. I'm a big fan of A Different Life. Have you got any plans for a, a new album? Yes, um, I've already started recording the next album. It's, it's just just started at the, the beginning of the month there and um, I'm aiming to have it out later this year, late, late summer. So. And what was it that attracted you to the Tannehill project? Um, well, I, it was Fred Freeman phoned me up and said, I've got these songs, I think they would suit your voice. Would you, you sing them? And, and, and I really, really like the material they gave me. Yeah, so really beautiful songs. Beautiful, the, yeah. Lay Me on a Wintry Lee was one of the Garden Sessions uh, songs of the year in 2006. Oh, great. <laughs> Good <laughs> so, stuff. It's a bit of a depressing one, but... Yeah, well, we love it, though. <laughs> and uh, Fly Me Taste Some Desert Isle yeah, is, uh, is a beautiful, romantic, I'd gorgeous definitely, song um, as well. definitely carry them on in my own shows, I think, at some point, so... You're the last from Dunfries and Galloway, yeah? Yes. Um, have you ever been to the Knock and Gorrick Festival? I haven't yet, no. It's so close. It's really, it's mad that I haven't been, but it just seems to always work out that I'm not in the region at the festival oh, uh, weekend, but I will be there one of these days, definitely. Thank you very much, Emily No bother, Smith. thank you. Cheers. See you, Angles. Even Emily Smith gets the same treatment as you do yes. as regards Knock and Gorrick. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would I counter that by saying... I that Angles is coming. I would yeah, counter that by it. saying that even Emily Smith hasn't been to Knock and Gorrick, so... Yeah, but she still gets berated for it. Mm-hmm. Well, no one know. escapes. No, not even the great and the good of folk escape. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was Tom uh, interviewing Emily Smith after the concert uh, uh, last Monday. Lovely I believe last. it was. Uh, but uh, a couple of nights ago, I managed to pin down Aaron Jones, and this is what he had to say about the project. I was actually involved in the original project, uh, the the Burns project. The guy that run, that is organising the Tannehill Hill project is called Dr. Fred Freeman, and he's a, stu- a, t- a lecturer at Edinburgh University. And he did the the Burns collection on Lynn Records, which was twelve or thirteen volumes. And it was the complete works of Burns, and it was a very ambitious project um, to record his complete works. Uh, subsequently, he's decided to do the works of Tamil, which I think will run till about four or five albums. Uh, and because I had been a part of the Burns album series, and had uh, they just the, yeah, I think it's just a sort of natural progression. I think Fred had sort of cherry picked people that he knew sort of were passionate about about doing the project and or would be passionate about doing the project and asked a, a handful of us along and pretty much at the launch on Monday it was it was everybody that was involved and, uh, unfortunately apart from Jim Reed the singer from Fife who couldn't make it but uh, um, hopefully he'll make some of the future things but yeah it's, it's a great project and, and Burn, everybody knows Burns not many people know Tano but Tano did a lot of very important songs as well and 
uh, he, he was a very different figure. He, he suffered from manic depression and eventually took his own life. So he quite a very dark character, and a lot of his songs reflect that. The harvesters are and the lads are so funny. Their hearts lean with love and their pockets with money. From morning to night is my jewel and my honey. I'll go to the north and be Molly, my dear. Hey, Donald, oh, Donald, hey, Donald Cooper. He's gonna want to seek a wife and he's come him without her. The rock hail rattles through the trees, the sullen lift lowers gloomy grey. The traveller sees a swelling storm and seeks the alehus by the way. Well, we've just been watching the launch of the Robert Tannehill CD from uh, Breaking All Records. I'm with Dr. Fred Freeman, the man who's brought this all together. The show tonight reads like a who's who of folk music. I mean, this must have been a mammoth task to bring this together. <clears throat> well, I mean, no larger than the task I did with it. I produced the complete songs of Robert Burns and I did all the musical arranging and this was just an extension of that, really. But Tannehill's been suppressed for 200 years and I knew that was the next project I would tackle. Justice hasn't been done to him at all and the material is superb. Well, there's clearly a passion for Robert Tannehill's stuff here. Um, there's another, is it another four volumes that are yet to come out? Um, there will be. There'll be. There's over 100 songs in, the, in his output. And uh, certainly there will be another four volumes which we want to complete, hopefully, by 2010, which will be the bicentenary of his death. So, and hopefully Paisley will have some celebration. Paisley and Renfrewshire at least will have celebrations in honour of great, great songwriter. When can we expect the second volume to be coming out? Uh, this I don't know. I'm pushing a bit. A lot has to do with budgets and what have you. And uh, sales have been fairly buoyant, but they need to be even more buoyant because, as you mentioned, bringing together a number of top-flight musicians, and I rehearse them quite hard, is not inexpensive. And the studio time, because I agonise over their musical arrangements, I agonise over the fidelity and what have you, it's a bit expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so there you have it. We'll just see how we go. But the next album may be more expensive because I'll, bringing in, I'll be bringing in a few Irish musicians um, because Tannehill, as I said, mentioned in the concert, had a soft spot for the Irish coming into Paisley, he used a number of Irish tunes, and it would be appropriate really to mix some of the Irish with our own folk. So that's what I, uh, I will do. That means either going across to Ireland, or which we might be doing, or bringing them here. So that's going to cost even even more. People like Len Graham, I would say, would take part, and maybe Jerry O'Connor and people like that. So you're talking about top flight musicians again. Yeah, you seem to be getting some fantastic musicians involved in it. Um, can we expect any more live performances as the, these volumes come out? I would hope so. Whether people will be able to sustain, uh, well, we had 15 of us on the stage. I, I doubt if we'll get performances with 15 of us again, unless somebody has a, an illimitable budget. But I would say you'll get probably core performances. You will get core performances of about five or six of us at a time. That's on the cards. And I hope to do something maybe even in the spring uh, for Tan Hill's birthday in uh, early May or something like that. So that would be nice. Maybe do something at Paisley Arts Centre or somewhere like that and a couple of other places too. It's, um, looking forward to all the rest of the volumes. Thank you very much, Dr. Fred Freeman. Thanks. Cheers. That was me speaking to Dr. Fred Freeman there, um, who produced the complete songs of Robert Tannehill. And what a fantastic night it was. Oh, fantastic night, yeah. Dr. Fred Freeman is an epic warrior of folk music. Absolutely. He he does. He goes the hard yards he does. for the focus. Angles, thank God, it's that time. We don't have to keep trying to prize it out of you. You're forced now <laughs> into submission. Dave, what's your angle? Mm-hmm. Well, as I said before, we've heard it before, um, we're going to do Glenn Logie. Um, it's a traditional tune. But is this the Jim Malcolm recording? It is indeed. Dusting off the Live in Glen Farg oh. album once yes, more. Yes, we are. Phone and 
twenty nobles sat down at the king's hall. And Barney Glen Logie was the flair of the ma. The one nine and nine nobles straight through Bankley Fair. I am Barney Glen Logie was the flair of them there. There were six and six maidens sat down at the king's hall. Barney Jean Obertelny was the flair of them ma. Didn't come Jeannie Garden, she come tripping down the stair. She's chosen Glen Logie for a ma that was there. Oh, Glen Logie, Glen Logie. If you brooks the kind, my love is laid upon you, I've told you my mind. He's turning round lightly as the garden's desire, saying I'm sorry, Jeanne Garden, I'm promised a war. To her maidens to make her a bed, with ribbons and the napkins to tie up her heat. And the supper spake of feather, and a wise man was he, saying, Oh, when you tit and tembrin, you smear good than he. I had your tongue feather, for this when I be, can I get me Glen Logie, for a him will I deed. Her feather sent chaplain, he's a man of great skill, he's right a blood letter, and I condemn well, saying, A pox on your Logie. Since it is so, my lady's love slid on you, must she die in her woe? A pox on you, Logie, since it is time, my lady's love slid on you, must she die in her prime? Amongst men, as up and speak, and Logie, what does John woman mean? Here he looks at the letter, a rain laugh, get he, a terry red over it. A tear blind says he, go saddle me the black horse, saddle me the brun, Bonnie Jean, no, but tell me, will be deed it I win. But the horses, when he saddled, not led on the green, when Bonnie Glen Logie was twelve miles his line. Was pale and wan, was she when Gilogi came in? Red and rosy grew she when she killed it was him. Where lies your pain, lady? Does it lie in your sight? Where lies your pain, lady? Does it lie in your heat? Oh no, no, Glen Logie, for your fair fair the path. The pain that I speak of, it lies in my heart. Turn round, Jeannie Garden, turn round in your sight, and it's I'll be the bridegroom, you'll be the bride. Married, or talk of stern told, but the Jean Obertelny was scarce sixteen year old. Bethelny, oh Bethelny, you shine where you stand, and the heather bells around you shine off Phoebe's land. Bethelny, oh Bethelny, you shine where you stand, and the heather bells around you shine off Phoebe's land. We've heard it before. On the garden sessions, and I've been known to knock out a few times in the uh, Royal Oak this myself. Of, this is one of Jack and I's favourite ones to sing, so I'm intrigued as to what a angle... cheeky little dad guard number. What um, angle uh, Angles is going to take on it. We need to know, Dave. What's your angle? Mm-hmm. Well, as I say, it's a traditional tune. It's a, a, a ballad which is also known as Bonnie Jean O'Bethelny, which mm. was first sort of written down in the 1760s. Um, and uh, it was published in Scottish Minstrels way back when. So it's been kicking around for a good long while. Right. Um, right. But essentially it starts off and there's That's these... the backstory. Uh, yeah. There's these uh, 24 nobles and they're, they're sitting down in the... In the or four in and the, 20. Four, well, 24. <laughs> <laughs> you pedant, Jack. 
Angle. And the lyric is four and twenty, nobles. Well, indeed, that's what the lyric is, but I'm explaining the song, Jack. That's okay. the point he, he, of the sorry, end. Okay, he, he's right. editing it down. <laughs> There's twenty-four. Um, and they're all, they're all sitting there uh, in, in, in the hall with the king. Um, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and Glenn Logie's there, and he's like the, the, he's, he's the shizzle, you know, he's the best one. <laughs> the best what? He's the Noble. best of all the nobles. He's, Why? Well, he's the he's the the handsomest. He's the the noblest. He's the 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 most wise and just and all that kind of nonsense. Right. Quite a catch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, there's like eighteen Damn of them riding around uh, through Bankery and and stuff, and they're all there. Is it Bankery Fair that they're riding through? Uh, no, it's spelled differently. So it isn't like a fair with a. No, no, it's spelled differently. Things getting sold and jugglers, clowns. No, it's fair as in as in nice. So they're riding through Bankery. It's in, the in same the spelling. No, it's not. F A I R. That's how you spell fun fair. Yeah, you're right. It is. You're thinking of F A Y R E, which is like Christmas fair, or a crazy old folky fair. Though maybe Angles is right here. Well, suggestions. We'll ne- we'll not trust yeah. my spelling. We'll not trust Ang- my spelling. Angles at garden <laughs> sessions. uk. I always liked the idea that he was riding through with a load of jugglers and jesters and stuff. <laughs> You know. But anyway, they're riding through, and and, 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 and Gwen Logie's with them. And of all the hor- guys riding on their horses, he's still the best one. No one can beat him. Um, right. And then there's also these uh, these uh, twelve ladies, also sitting down in the hall, six and six for Jack. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, maidens. And, uh, uh, Bonnie Jean Oberfelny. Bonnie there. Jean. Who's Bonnie Jean? Um, she's she's uh, well. Is she, she our heroine. Well, she was in the. Uh, in, in, is she in the, like um, the the equivalent to Glen Logie, and is she the best of the maidens? She is. She's 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 the best of all the maidens. Um, but there is a, another. A, so we've a been introduced of, uh, to the cream of the crop mm, here, essentially. We've, we have. It's, we've it's set up. Cut to the you've chase. Got your, you've got your two. Uh, you've got your two protagonists clearly. Labeled. It's better than it starts with a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I would quite like it if it started with, with a couple of the peasants who were just out sort of collecting mud outside, though, you know, and had a love affair. We don't get to hear about them. No, we don't, no, we just don't get, get to hear about them. They're, they're, they're always the ones that, that drop somebody in it. You know? They're just yeah. cutting peat for the fires of the lords. Oh. <laughs> so, anyway, so, what songs happens? sometimes aren't very well, socialist. Uh, well, Bonnie Jean's taken a bit of a fancy to Glen Logie. Uh, and, um, and she sort of says to him, you know, I'm, I've fallen in love with you. I've that's it gone completely head over heels. Mm. How's Straight about it? Mm-hmm. Like um, doesn't and, mess about. No, no, she doesn't mess no. about. And uh, Glenn Logie turns around and says, um, uh, "Sorry, no, uh, I don't think so. I don't. Th- I don't. I, no, it's not really for me." So does Bonnie Gino Bethany just not cut the mustard? No, well, no, he doesn't quite he, say that. He says he's promised to someone else. Uh, he's promised. Oh, well, there's nothing but there's no do. further stuff about her about the other person in the song. So I reckon it's just a get out. I don't know. Well, that, it sounds it, quite no. It, it could have been like his lord, his father, sort of had some arranged marriage that that poor old like Glen Logie wasn't really that. Well, that, I think Glen Logie, into, if Glen Logie is the lord that you say he is, and that he's you know he's respected and noble and fair and just and so on, he wouldn't lie about that. And mm, also, it's mm. also going to be quite sad for Bonnie Jean of Bethany because there's no way he's going to leave someone if he's promised himself to him being such a noble and well, just that's true, and, and it is quite sad, uh, and and she gets really quite overcome by this. Uh, and she 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 heads back to her to her ladies in waiting, her maidens, um, and and uh, gets them to to make her bed up. And she takes to her bed, and she you know wraps her head up in 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 uh, napkins and ribbons and stuff, hides her head. And why? I, I napkins think she's, and ribbons. I don't know. I think she's just trying to hide herself away. You know, hide her I, face. I, from I don't the know world. why napkins and ribbons, hmm. but she does. Anyone else would just go out and get drunk with their mates. Not Bonnie Jean Bethelny. No, well, mm. she, she's a, she's a lovely lady, and she's been turned down by the and she's mm, broken hearted. To crack out the napkins. But uh, yeah. her father comes in yeah. anyway and says and says, "Hold on, I can solve all your problems. All you need to do is just marry Dunfermline. He's he he he's better anyway." Who's she, this Dunfermline? Uh, nah, he sounds dodgy. He, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just he's just another one of the nobles. He's he's not quite up to Glen Logie standards. And she says to him, "No, that no, no." Don't talk like that. That's not going to work. Hod your no. tongue, feather. Exactly. Yeah. Give us none of that. Glenn Logie's the guy I want. He's the one for me. You know, and, and if I can't get him, well, that's it. I'll, I'll you know, I'll die. She, I'll just, she's threatening suicide. 
Um, well, she's not threatening oh, suicide. Oh, she just says she, she'll die. I think it's kind of broken heart death rather than rather than I'm going to kill myself kind of death. Mm. Um, so what does her dad say? No, nah, you'll get over it. Come on. Well, her dad's her dad Married goes. Femme, well, okay, obviously she's pretty broken hearted. It's more good than he. <laughs> I'll do. I'll do. That's just in it for the money. <laughs> just just for the big top dowry payments. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, trying to wed her off to a good family. Mm. No, he says. He says. Well, I'll try my best. You know, I'll. He gets. He gets a chaplain to to write a letter. It's really, you know, persuasive kind of a dude to write a letter saying, uh, basically, hold on, Glen Logie, you know. What's going on here? A pox on you, Logie, he says. So, damn you. No, he's already thing. agreed to marry some other maiden. Well, but, you know, they want to try and change his mind. Yeah, but you've got to accept it. Ah, anyway, it's not, it's not going to work. It's wasted wasted postage. If, wasted I, if a lass got her dad to write a letter to me, I think that would really just disturb me. It would, it, yeah. It would but this is me. Back in the good old days when all things were arranged beforehand and done very sort of properly and uh, and that kind of thing. So he gets the, he sends off this letter saying, oh, no. saying, Thank saying... Thank God we don't live in that many. <laughs> Imagine getting a letter through the post. Right. <laughs> this is who you're marrying. So Glenn Logie gets the letter, surely, and just and says, oh, "Good God!" I'm well, right. yeah, he Steer gets, clear of he her. gets this letter. He's, like he's with all his nutters. he's with all his pals, and he gets he gets handed this letter, and he sort of he gets it and goes, <laughs> and "We chuckled to himself, said, 'I'm oh, going well, read letter here. What's it say?'" And he kind of he's chuckling just been away a bit of a blackguard angles. Yeah, I mean, he, he he sort of gets the he gets the letter. He opens it up, and he's reading it away to himself, chuckling away. But then he realizes it's, it's actually what it's saying is, uh, she, you know, she's going to die because she's so in love with you. And and uh, and a wee tear sort of he's terrified. comes to his eye, and he's he's really quite terrified and upset about the fact that that, that this terrified. is going to happen. <laughs> She's a lunatic. No, I think at this point, you, no, you, he's you, terrified for her, not by her. I think. I like to think he doesn't okay. really want the other lass anyway. He wants Bonnie Jean with Elne all along. It's just you know, as soon as she threatens suicide, are then you it's like okay. the story in the direction I think you are. <laughs> you're trying to make this. You're trying to make this nice. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. But basically, what about uh, Glenn Logie's woman. Glenn, well, <laughs> we don't know about her. Why not? She's not mentioned in the tune. That's She's why an integral not. part. If he's supposed to be the you know, the best lord of all, it, well, she's probably think... like the dumb fembrin equivalent of the female world. So maybe dumb fembrin yeah. can get together. Yeah, with yeah. It'll, it'll all be sorted woman. out. Okay. So what happens? So anyway. Oh, you want to know, do you? Yeah, I'm intrigued. I wondered how long that was going to go on for. Um, he, he gets up, he jumps up, and he says, "Go get my, uh, go get my horses, the black one and the brown one, because I'll need both of them. Because I'm assuming it's a long way, you know, yeah, and he needs one to refresh the other one mm-hmm. and saddle them up. Um, because if you don't get, if, you know, if I'm not there, pretty sharpish, Gene's uh, going to die, you know, and mm-hmm. and we don't want that." So he um, hauls his ass. Well, he doesn't because unfortunately uh, the horses don't get saddled in time and they don't get you know let out th- th- into the fields on time mm. and they're not. So he's ready. just standing around tapping his toes. And, and uh, this is why he just go to the stables himself rather than sending the poor peasant folk. Yeah. You know I mean? but hopefully they were just being sensible and just <laughs> drinking or something somewhere. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, whatever they were doing, they weren't doing their jobs. So no, I'm, I'm assuming they got flogged hands. afterwards or something like that. He gets there in the end. Uh, but um, when he comes in, does he get, uh, how, she's, how does he she's, get there? He flew. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> does it really matter? He got there. That's the point. He got there in the end. He'd have been quicker but, if he just waited for the horses. By the time he got there, um, she's 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 pretty ill. You know, she's pale and wan. Uh, we've had this before. <laughs> we've had angle, this before, sure. indeed. Pale and wan. How many um, times can wan be mentioned and, in an uh, angle? <laughs> and, 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 and she's sort of lying there, all all, all uh, pale and wan. Oh, there's another one. Uh, yeah, okay. and, uh, and and then she realises who it is and, and suddenly perks up because she realises and Logie's come to, to she assumes profess his love for her and it's all going to be groovy and has um, he? well he says to her what's wrong what's wrong you know uh, are you where how are you ill is it like uh, pains is where what's going on and she says no no it's nothing to do with physical pain it's, it's in my heart you know don't worry about that. It's all going to be okay because I'll marry you. Uh, and in the end, uh, well, they, they 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 get married. How old was Bonnie Jean? Uh, she was not even. She was just sixteen. See, this is this is why all this went pear shaped. It's because yeah. she's sixteen. In about two months, she'll fall in love with one of their stable hands. <laughs> Surely. 
<laughs> yeah, it's bound to go awry. Surely to well, goodness. Angles, what on earth is the moral to this song? Well, the moral of this one appears to be that uh, emotional blackmail will help you get away with anything your heart <laughs> desires. That's a shocking moral. <laughs> is that your angle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And before we go to this week's featured artist, who's Roscoe Galloway, um, what's coming up on next week's show as regards Celtic Connections? But some more from Aaron Jones. Some more from Rory McMillan, I think. And there may be some other interviews coming up because I'll be heading back through again to Glasgow um, on Saturday coming up to see the Peat Bog Fairies concert and on a Friday night. No doubt once again rubbing shoulders with the great and the good of folk in the Festival Club. Time for uh, the letters bag. Ah, we're squeezing it in. We're squeezing oh, yeah. it in. We didn't even mention it for fear we wouldn't have time. <laughs> I've, I've got a very special letter today. I think the, the best letter we've ever received um, from Penny, one third of Tantiri, who we played back in episode. What would that be, Jack? Putting you on the spot Ooh, here. Ooh, I, I can't remember. It was a good few episodes ago. About episode 13, 14. It was a good episode. Like but yeah, and they were. Uh, yeah, they, she, she, Penny was the. the girl from New Zealand who did the beautiful kind of high harmonies on their stuff there. And she writes, Hello chaps, just wanted to say thanks for the belated birthday wishes. I had a fabulous night at the Oak. I forgot how much I love it there. Must make a point to come down more often. Yes. Fabulous Always Angle. Always a good plan. This episode too. How I laughed. <laughs> Shout out for you, Angles. Thank you. Um, anyway, um, she's written us a poem to the Lords of the Garden, or Folk is Cool, Jazz is Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the day I hang around and wait with bated breath. The garden session so is due. Is it on the website yet? The highlight of my calendar, beacon in the night. You might think that I'm joking, but it's a fortnightly delight. A pounding mix of songs I've never heard before. It's broadened my folk horizon horizons and always leaves me wanting more these days with jazz hip-hop and rap and other music that is wrong it's nice to know that someone cares that folk is cool and going strong if you like (laughs) folk then listen settle down to here pull yourself a pint of ale absorb the atmosphere the tunes the chat the angle it'll really strike a chord Long may they rain the mothy, those garden sessions, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Penny. That's a oh, beautiful tune. I like that's the idea brilliant. that she's sitting there with a self-poured pint of ale and enjoying the garden <laughs> sessions. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, that's brilliant, Paul. Cheers. Um, Tom, who's our featured artist this week? Featured artist is uh, Roscoe Galloway. Mm-hmm. To live and fly by butterfly, it cannot die. Cocoons were hatched to live and fly by butterfly, it cannot die. Drew me to your sacred isle to walk in St. Columbus miles. My one regret, I left a trace of veil over your perfect face. Oh, your perfect face. Can two people burn so bright and fizzle into darkest night? Feel my fingers in your hair and sweet patchouli in the air. Island lady of my song, I know where it all went wrong. I know where it all went wrong. See, it's so clear in my mind, the hate I must leave behind. I was so lucky to find you, girl. But I watch you. Slip out my world. You touched me with a magic kiss. You sang about our song of bliss. A fantasy of truth be told. In two months we both grew so old. Quick to break what we we'll live long. A prince and princess in this song. Tell me where it all. Tarot cards, our lives are dealt Now that future twists and melts Glory, glory, hallelujah What a wonder just to gaze on you Cocoons are hatched to live and fly A butterfly, it cannot die Love we made can never die See, it's so clear in my 
Okay, once again, I found myself downstairs in uh, the Royal Oak. Uh, this week I'm joined by Roscoe Galloway, who's this week's featured artist on the Garden Sessions. Hi, Roscoe. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Um, that first song that we had there was called Butterfly. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Um, it's a song about a girl I met about two and a half, three years ago or something. Uh, and we split up and I was inspired to write that song. I see. Um, there's a kind of a recurrent theme that goes through all your music. I, I don't know what it is. It's a certain kind of sound. I don't know if you would be able to put your finger on it more as to what is the Roscoe sound. Eh, uh, I'm no, I'm not really sure. But uh, I just try and uh, tell the truth as best I can in my lyrics and uh, try and make the tune as interesting as possible to listen to at the same time. I suppose. It seems to have kind of folk elements running through it of like these sort of epic stories. Um, yeah, at the same time, the the music isn't necessarily traditional. It's yeah, definitely. I like a lot of those guys, uh, storytellers like your classics, Bob Dylan and Neil Young and stuff like that. So I like trying to weave a little story and at the same time leave a wee bit of uh, ambiguity there for for the listener. But being up in Iona was a big inspiration. It just seemed to be really natural to. To write songs like that, you stayed up in Iona for how long was it? Um, last summer, uh, six or seven months, and about the same the summer before that. Uh, and then returned to Edinburgh and yeah. uh, making your way back into the the scene quite effectively, I would say. Yes, uh, all about crazy. The last couple of weeks, I've been playing a lot uh, different places and with different people, mostly supporting electric bands, um, just solo before they play. Um, but it's good, yeah, I'm getting out there, definitely. And you're coming round to the folk world, uh, this is something you were saying a while back, that um, your music's edging closer and closer to folk music. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, a big part of that is is coming into the Royal Oak and hearing guys playing uh, it's predominantly folk music. Um, and in the last year or so I've got uh, right into guys like John Martin, David Graham, uh, Bert Jansch, um, John Renborn, kind of folk finger picky guitarists and uh, so yeah that's only been the last couple of years um, let's move on to your second song and uh, tell us a little bit about that why you've chosen to play this one um, that was just a daft one I wrote up in Iona in between uh, five or six more serious songs that kind of came in the middle I love Johnny Mitchell uh, and it's a song about um, a kind of joke song if you want about wanting to have a baby with Johnny Mitchell uh, when she was absolutely stunning. I'm not saying she's not attractive now, but uh, back when she was in her early 20s, it uh, just seemed like a good idea, a good thing to write a song about. I'm sure many people <laughs> would agree with the sentiment in that. This is Rizm Johnny. Be a better time than right now. 
That's Raise Him Johnny, um, Roscoe's take on what it may be like to raise a child with Johnny Mitchell. Um, I'm with Roscoe Galloway at the moment downstairs in the Oak. He's this week's featured artist on the Garden Sessions. Um, hopefully we're going to talk a little bit about the influences uh, behind your music because, as we said before, it's such a unique kind of sound. It must have been patched together from a lot of kind of a lot of influences from here, there and everywhere. Yes, yeah, stacks. I grew up... Um Sandwiched between two uncles who played uh, music pretty much non-stop and uh, got me into it all from a very early age, like two or three years old. Uh, a big mixed bag of folk like The Small Faces, Sex Pistols, The Jam, uh, Free, Rod Stewart, then The Faces, uh, stacks of stuff, but more your kind of traditional rock and roll stuff. Yeah. And then as I got older, I got into... Uh, Funk music, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, had a big Jimi Hendrix phase, uh, discovered Joni Mitchell, as I said before, and then latterly I've been uh, totally in love with the music of John Frusciante the last two or three years, um, and he's he's a huge influence just musically, because he's, he's very diverse as well, and um, doesn't get stuck in one kind of genre of music, so yeah, that's, that's a big inspiration, so... Um, but I don't really listen to that much music. I listen to a lot of music at work, but uh, yeah. I've not had much time to actually sit and listen to music recently. So, so you've kind of done a sort of inverted Bob Dylan in that you've sort of you've started off electric and um, with all the kind of yeah. rock sound, and you're sort of veering more towards the acoustic and folk scene now. It's yeah, definitely. I was in. I've been in three or four different bands. Uh, through Shane, still kind of get that back together, but uh, yeah, they've all been quite kind of loud, um, and I've played an electric guitar. And yeah, I've just went back to the acoustic guitar the last last two or three years. Well, um, it's us coming to the end of our time here. Um, thanks very much, Roscoe. Uh, your last song uh, that we're going to listen to is called Little Jake. Something I would want to ask about this is that a few of your songs, this name Jake, pops up. Yeah, these are uh, like songs I wrote up in Iona. Uh, this is the first one that I don't normally play because it goes on for so long. Uh, <laughs> But recorded, uh, I think it might work a little bit better, but it's, it's, this is uh, Jake when he's a wee boy um, and his dad takes him into the mountains and leaves him and he meets Mary. And then there's another two songs that follow that, it's Jake and Mary. Mm. And then Jake and Mary have a, a wee boy and uh, that's the third song in the trilogy. A trilogy of songs, of which I think you can hear on your MySpace account um, or on the Garden Sessions, I think Jake and Mary's up there to download as well. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Roscoe Galloway. This is Little Jake. Thanks very much for coming along. You're welcome. Thank you. Run, 
Jake. Learn to run, learn to run, Jake. Learn to run. Well, after two years, he could sing, he could scream. Hunt in the valley and fish in the stream. He found himself haunted in beautiful dreams by the face of a woman. Never had seen by the face of a woman. He never had seen. Wandering far and traveling alone, Jake walked to a town where the lights were all on. He heard a voice like a nightingale song, and the face in his dreams became flesh and bone. Yeah, the face in his Became flesh and bone. He was wasted and weary, but he pulled on the tide that rang on the bell that was hanging inside. And Mary took one look and fell for his eyes in your eyes, Jake. The light in your eyes, in your eyes. Galloway, this week's featured artist. Good stuff. Oh, Fantastic great stuff. stuff, yeah. They're brilliant uh, songs. It's a totally different kind of sound, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just sits on its own. Podcast! Oh, oh. A tear rolls down Lins Angle's way. cheek. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Having fun. said that, though, I can, I can have a nice cup of tea now. Um, on next week's show, we have all the usual features, Folky News, Dave's Angle... Letters bag, featured artist. More stuff from Celtic Connections. Exactly. Um, Tom and Angles are both going out there again. What are you going to be seeing in the next week? Pete Bog Fairies. Pete Bog Fairies. That'll be good. I'm going to try and do a little bit of a a tour around and see if I can pick up something off the cuff kind of a thing. Okay, very Angus non-committal is, from Angles. Non-committal. Ambiguous and as ever. Ominous. <laughs> who, who knows quite what that means. <laughs> I don't know how my diary is for the week, Jack. I'm not sure what I can make it through. Also, don't forget... Ever committed to the Folky Trail. <laughs> don't forget that uh, www.gardensessions.co.uk is our website and it's just been given a complete revamp. A whole new website up there at the moment uh, with loads more stuff than before as well as all the usual free Folky downloads. Um, of many of the artists you'll hear on here there's the listings for the podcast you can read um, a track list for this show and many others and listen to the show itself there and there's reviews and folky news up there too Um, till next time round though um, with more of the Celtic connections and so on from myself Jack Foster, Tom Harland and Dave the Angles Gimble good night, cheerio catch you later down the folky trail Mm.